So welcome to Millennium Blades. So Millennium Blades is essentially a deck, a meta deck builder. So we are playing as CCG players who play in tournaments, but kind of big picture meta wise. The game is played over three rounds. In each of those three rounds has two phases, a deck building phase and then a tournament phase. The deck building phase is where we're going to start. The game does offer also a pre-release tournament that we are not going to be playing tonight. We're playing three full tournament, three full rounds, which is deck building and then tournament, then deck building, then tournament, deck building, then tournament, and then final scoring. So all the scoring, I guess I should point out here, all the scoring in this game looks a lot, will come on this little pad. So we have pre-release, which we're not going to be doing round one, round two, round three, and then scoring any additional little things, and then going from there into final scoring. So we're going to start with deck building. In the deck building phase, let's go ahead and cover that. Well, before we get into that, I suppose I ought to tell you guys there's a lot of information, a lot of stuff that you guys are looking at. Let's start with that. First off, we have two banks. We have one bank over here for this side of the table, one bank over there at that end of the table. Then we have two tournament prize decks, a bronze and a silver over here, which those would be, uh, if you ever went to your friendly local game store and did magic tournaments, you get little promo packs. That's what these represent. Then we have the store area right here. This is a massive stack of cards about, about yay high. Right here, the store consists of these nine face down cards, as well as that incredible deck of cards there. Moving over, <clears throat> excuse me, we have card fusion zones. I'll cover all this here in a little bit. Then we have the metagame types. We have element here and we have types there. We have the aftermarket area, which you can sell cards to other players, etc., etc. Then in everybody's own, oh, I guess we also have uh, uh, plus one to plus three tokens as well as we go along. In addition to that, everybody has their own tableau. So their tableau, it's double-sided. Everything is set to the deck building side. Everybody has a color, as you can see by these three little cubes in each of it. So me playing yellow, Khan black, Chris over there with blue, and Ariel with green. In addition to that, everybody has a character. And for me, it's deck with, uh, decks of plenty here, all right? And then a set of friendship cards, which are giving away victory points to your friends, basically bribing them to be able to get you extra cards. There are three cell markers each player has. At the beginning of each deck building round, everyone's going to start with 30 Millennium Bucks or 30 Bucks. Now, these are actually, yes, we are playing with paper money because this is a bit of a unique beast because when I first got this game, you actually have to put together sets of car or sets of paper money. So an entire stack of money, these being tens, these being fives, these being ones. So everybody starts with 30 millennium bucks, okay? Then everybody has a starter deck. These were somewhat random here, so our starter decks there, and then also at the beginning of the game, we're going to we got dealt three other cards from the top of the deck as well to go. So that's kind of what you guys are looking at. So now I feel like what I ought to do is kind of go over the anatomy of the cards and then go over the different things that you can do in deck building, and then we'll actually get started. I'm going to very briefly go over what we're going to be doing in a tournament to give you guys a little bit of context and go from there. So that said, let's go ahead and take a look. There are kind of three different cards in this game, three different types of cards. We have deck boxes, we have accessories, and then we have everything else, okay? Deck boxes, and you know what? I'm actually going to show you guys what the tournament board is actually looks like so this has a little bit more context in the bottom left we have a deck box so literally your deck box card will go there your accessory cards will go there and when you play cards they will go into your tableau up here okay so with that said your deck box will have some sort of rule breaker special ability that is not in play it just will do something the anatomy of a card however let's go over at the top we have the name of the card, which is usually some kind of pun or fun little thing. 
the star rating of the card in the top left, the set in which it comes from, so the set name, notice this is a Red Hill here. Down below it is the element. The element, there are six different elements in the game. So both of these have the fire element on them, but they could be fire, fire, air, light, water, earth, or dark. Down below that, there may be, but notice this card does not, but this one does, have a type. So this being an animal type, there could also be myth, construct, citizen, soldier, mage. Basically, all you care about is the actual symbol possibly the name so it makes it easier. Hey, I'll trade you for this animal card, whatever, so it gives people context. Then down below that, it shows the rarity of a card. So these being core cards, they could also be, and I'll actually bring this over so you guys can see the handy dandy little symbol chart right here. So you have the rarities right here, along with the various types and elements there. All right, what up, Peter? <laughs> All right, so those are the, that's the anatomy of a card. Now, there are going to be different little words down here. So score, reaction, ongoing, flip, action, all that. We'll get into that when we get into the tournament. I'm not going to go into the details of that. Just know that what you have here, that's the anatomy of a card. The star rating, the element, and the type being probably the most important for basic understanding of the game. Okay, so that is the different types of cards that are in the game. Now, let's talk about what it is that we're going to be doing in the deck building phase itself. In the deck building phase, you have seven things that you're going to be taking part in at the same time. Oh, and did I mention these are timed? <laughs> okay, so we're going to have a seven minute timer for the first set of it. Then there's going to be another seven minute timed thing and then a final six minute time thing. So each deck building phase will take approximately 22 minutes. 20 of it timed, then probably two minutes in between to make sure everybody's ready and then we go into the next set of time. Okay? So in that, during those times, so it's going to be chaotic because it's real time. If somebody has a rules question, we will pause the timer. Everyone must stop what they are doing and then once everything's clarified, mm -hmm. then we will continue back again because mm -hmm. we're going to take this totally serious, okay? So what are the seven <laughs> things that you can do? You can build your deck. So let's take a look at your player board to begin with. You have a collection area over here, which uh, any cards that you're going to be uh, for collections will obviously be placed here. Your deck area will be, this is what you're going to be bringing to the tournament at the end of the 20 minute time period, okay? Mm -hmm. Then your binder is basically everything else that you're not going to be using for this particular tournament that you're gonna keep in your binder and stash away for maybe to sell later on or maybe to put into a deck possibly in a future tournament, etc., etc. all right? So, Building your deck. At the end of the 20 minute time section, you must have no more than eight singles, eight singles being not deck boxes, not accessories. So everything else being a single. So you can have a maximum of eight of those. You can have a one deck box and two accessories. Now we might have rule breakers individually that allow for the breaking of that, but that's a maximum. You could have a deck of six singles if you want. However, if you break that rule, you have to then take out your deck, take out your accessories. If somebody has nine singles, shuffle them up, and somebody randomly picks one. There is no mulligans whatsoever in this game. You screwed up, or you played a card in the wrong order, I'm so sorry. No mulligans whatsoever. So that is going to be what our ultimate goal is in the deck building, is to build our decks for the tournament. Eight singles, one deck, two accessories. The next thing is making a collection. So let me go ahead and switch back to the other camera so you guys can see this. In a collection, you're going to be selling cards out of the game to be able to get some amount of victory points. The number of victory points that you're going to be getting is going to be determined by how many or how big the collection is that you're setting, selling the, or getting rid of. I shouldn't say selling. The first card is worth zero points. Anytime you see gold stars like this, this is going to be victory points. So the second card being worth two, the third being worth four, 
so a set of three would be worth four victory points at the end of the game. So on and so forth, all the way up to 21 victory points. So how do you construct a collection? Well, you all the cards must have the same element and have different star ratings. So for instance, these two share a element there and they have a different star rating. So I could sell this as a collection of two cards. Or if I wish, they must share either, I should say either, all the fire element or an element or a type. So you'll notice if I choose to sell by the element, I now have three cards in my collection that I'm selling here because they all share fire. But if I chose to sell by type or make a collection by type, this would not fly because this one does not share the animal type. Mm -hmm. So it's an either or and the star rating must all be different. Mm -hmm. So this set of three at the end of the deck building phase would be worth four victory points. And these go out of the game back to the box. Okay? So that is a collection, creating a collection. Any questions on that? Nope. All nope. right, moving on. Next, buying a pack from the store. <laughs> so this is a really cool graphic design thing that they mm -hmm. did. If you look close at the top and bottom of each of these cards, it actually looks like a, a pack, a mm -hmm. CCG pack, right? Mm -hmm. So what these represent is the rare card, the best card in a 15-pack deck. So if you're familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Magic, whatever, that's what all of these cards represent. At any given time, all of us have the option of 10 different cards in which we can buy. However, you don't know what you're buying. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the, you don't know what random in a pack you're going to get. You have limited information, though. The cost to purchase is the number in the top right corner. So that is three millennium bucks. So I should stress, that is this pack of money is one millennium buck. Don't be ripping these off, please. Mm -hmm. So this is $3, okay? There you go. So that would cost three bucks. You'll notice this one here is four, three, it's, that one's five, etc. You then take it and immediately refill that area. The player who just bought that card and that refills is the first one to get dibs for that card if there is ever a discrepancy. But we're all gentlemen here, so no worries. No harm, no foul. The other information is over on the left and right-hand side of the various decks of cards. The left-hand side will show the type that is combined or contained within that set. So this one here, this Fist of Steel, they are all going to be fighters. Whereas here, you'll see that it's a mix of fighters, mage, animal, fighter, mage within that. Then on the right-hand side shows the different types. The other important aspect of this is the top symbol means that is going to be the most common within that set. There will be three total within that set. Then the three middle, there will be two of those in each set. And then the rarest will be the one at the bottom. There will only be one within that set. So if we were to go through this entire deck and grab all the Fist of Steel cards, there would be three air, there would be two fire, two water, two light, yet only one dark card in that entire set. So it's a little bit of secret or you know information that it conveys without you knowing the exact mm -hmm. distribution. Also, I want to point out that these two sides do not necessarily correlate, meaning the mage will not necessarily be a fire. Okay, cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So... Buying cards, you can do that as long as you have cash. Any questions on buying cards? No. Nope. Nope. All right. Next, fusing, ca fusing cards. These are cool little promos and super strong cards. There's bronze, there's silver, there's gold. You must choose any five cards that you wish from your hand, your binder, if you will. So I say these five cards, I'm going to discard. Uh, put back into the box, I apologize. So I take these five cards, they go out of the game completely, and then I put one of my cell markers on that and I take one of those cards. Each of us can get one bronze, each of us can get one silver, each of us can get one gold in a single deck building phase, mm -hmm. okay? However, once you have a cell marker on there, it's just a visual cue saying, hey, I already got this type of card, all right? Notice it's five, seven, and nine respectively. So that's getting rid of a whole lot of cards out of mm. your deck. Okay, that's one way to do so. Just remember, these are out of the game. That's 
the fusion zone. Moving now over to the aftermarket. Now, everybody has three cell markers because it's a four player game. One of which would each of these, if you do the fusion, you then can't sell cards as you can see. But maybe there's some really good card that you have that you're like, you know what, I think somebody might really like this card, but I'm not gonna have use of it now. So instead of it just collecting dust in my binder, I'm gonna put it over here to sell. Well, unlike consignment, you immediately get paid for what it is, the card. So whatever the star rating of it, you get from the bank that amount of money. So I would actually get four bucks from the bank into my supply. But in addition to that, I have to put a sell marker on it. You are limited to three sell markers between the fusion and the market. So if people aren't buying that card, that sell marker is locked up for the entire deck building phase unless somebody buys it. Buying a card is just like selling, except you pay four bucks to the bank, you return this to whoever it is, and you get to add it into your hand slash binder. Okay? During the deck building, you'll see that there are 12 spaces here. We are not limited to 12. However, if you do a little bit of math, four times three, there's 12 <laughs> spaces. So yes, in a four player game, you are limited to 12 in the, by that rationale, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, anybody can buy, you cannot buy your own back. So once you put it here and you have a sell marker on there, it's there until the end of the deck building phase or until somebody has purchased it from you, okay? Or from the, the game, as it were. Also, we're going to try and do uh, a good job of putting the cell markers under the uh, gra graphic because that's just flavor. All the information is going to be important for people to be able to mm -hmm. see, okay? So that is buying and selling cards to the aftermarket. Any questions on that? Nope. The last thing is trading with players. Now, we're grown-ups. <laughs> we're gonna play the, the free market variant. Basically, what that means is you can swap however you want to swap. So I, you can swap cards, you can swap money, and you can swap victory points. The victory points come in the form of these friendship cards. So let me go ahead and show you what these are right here. So everybody has three different types of friendship cards or three different values, I should say, like so. There we go. So there are three, one, victory point, two, two victory point, and one three point victory point. At the end of the game, or excuse me, during the deck building, you can use these as enticements. Oh, I really want that card, Ariel. How about I give you $2 and I'll give you a two victory point friendship. Well, you get these and then you score these at the end of the game. They are straight victory points, okay? But once you're out of them, you're out of them, okay? So you have a total of six of those during the course of the game. That's pretty much the entire deck building phase. It's chaotic, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. There is one more little <laughs> aspect, but I think I'll cover that as we go along, which comes into the meta game, which is also going to be for the tournament. All right, so that said, I think we can go ahead and start getting ready for the deck building. Mm -hmm. I will talk about the tournament briefly. The tournament, as I mentioned, you're going to have a maximum of eight singles, one deck, and two accessories. The tournament is going to take place, we're going to be trying to get RP, okay? Or rank, rank points. Rank points, mm -hmm. which the rank points are going to be tracked with these little markers, the singles, the, uh, the, the, the tens, the, 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 oh boy, the singles, the tens, and the hundreds, <laughs> there we go, for the number of points that you score in a given tournament. And the reason that matters is because at the end of a tournament, depending on which tournament it is, first through fourth place are going to score victory points, which is the goal of the game, okay? Based on, so in the first tournament, 21 down to nine for each uh, player's placing in the tournament. The tournament is not chaotic, unlike the deck building. It's going to start with the first player playing, you must play one single card from your hand into here, into your tableau. You will have already placed your deck boxes in your accessories, and then you may take a single action. But it's going to be in turn order. So I will go play one, then Colin will play one, then Chris, then Ariel, and we will mm -hmm. keep going around until each of us has played six cards. 
Even though we have eight in our hand, it gives you a little bit of flexibility. There might be some rule breakers that make it more than six, and if so, it will then extend off to the right of the, there. But we count the number of rank points. Whoever scored the most rank points would score first place in a tournament, so on and so forth. Rinse and repeat, do that three times. That's the ball game. We'll score up any uh, friendship points at the end of the game that we've accumulated, plus for every four bucks that you have left over, it's worth one point at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points wins.